do you actually need another sorting algorithm after the very fast quick sort and the really efficient merge sort algorithm? Well, the answer is yes, because all of these algorithms have an average case time complexity of order of n log n. But what happens if you want to write an even faster code? What do you do then? Well, counting sort is the path to that. But there are some limitations when you are using a counting sort. But the good news is that the counting sort algorithm works in an order of n time complexity. Stay tuned to find more about it. Hello friends, welcome back to Study Algorithms, a place where I simplify programming for you with animations, visuals and some really easy to understand examples. First, I will tell you a little bit about counting sort and the special scenarios in which it is useful. Then I will do a live demonstration in front of you and show you what happens behind the scenes. Going forward, we will look at the implementation and then do a dry run of the code. So without further ado, let's get started. As you all know, there are a lot of sorting techniques. For example, the selection sort, bubble sort and the insertion sort have a worst case time complexity of order of n square. Then you have some advanced sorting techniques like the merge sort and quick sort, which have an average case time complexity of order of n log n. But have you ever thought what is common amongst all of these techniques? Well, all of them are comparison based sorting techniques. That means at some point or the other, while you're implementing your algorithm, you're actually comparing two elements. That means you're taking up two elements and then determining if one of them is smaller or one of them is larger. And then using this result, you will try to process your final output and then produce the final sorted array, right? Counting sort is a little bit different in this regard. You never actually compare any values. Well, then you might ask, how do you even form a sorted array? This is where the core idea of a counting sort kicks in. Counting sort is really helpful in scenarios where you have a limited range of elements. What do you mean by that? That means you would know the range in which your element would lie. It could be a range of 1 to 10. It could be a range of 1 to 100. For example, if I ask you to sort some characters of the English alphabet. Now, you know that English alphabets range from A to V and that range is 26, right? You cannot have more than 26 characters. So in such a scenario, a counting sort algorithm will be very, very fast. Similarly, let us say I ask you to sort the marks of some students. Now, it is very much likely that the marks of these students would be in the range of 0 to 100, right? So once again, you have a defined range. That means at the max, your values could range from 0 to 100, right? In these scenarios, counting sort is really helpful. And we are going to leverage this feature or rather this property to implement the counting sort algorithm. Now, enough with the chit chat. Let us see how all of this comes into action. I have this input array that consists of certain elements and I want to sort them and form a resultant sorted array. So how do you go about it? Do you remember that I told you the counting sort algorithm works upon the idea that you know a certain range of elements? How do you find that range? One way would be to find the maximum element and the minimum element that you can find in an array. In this example, the minimum element that you can find is 0 and the maximum element that you can find is 5. So you know that the total range of this array is 6 elements. You cannot have any other element that lies outside of this range. So what do you do next? You create a temp array or a count array or an auxiliary array, whatever you like to call it, of this size. That is the range, maximum minus minimum. In this case, our range is 6, right? So I create an array of size 6. Now, this array has indices. And what we're going to do is, we are going to store the count of 
each element at its index. So it means that at index one, we are going to store what is the count of the number of ones in the array. At index five, we are going to count how many number of fives there are present in the array. And you can do it in just one scan. How? So let us say I'm starting with the first element that is five. So I would put a one in here, right? Going ahead, I have the number two. So at index number two, I put one. Then I see five again. But at five, I have the value one. So what I would do is I would increment it by one. So this value now changes to two. Then I see five again. So I would increment this value and change it to three. Going ahead, I see the number three. So I would update the value at index three would to be one. Then I see one and I would update the value at index one to be one. So up till this point, if you see, we have stored the frequency of each of the elements at their respective indices. You can see that up till this point, we have encountered three fives and we have three at index number five. Similarly, we are gonna go ahead and fill up this array. I will do it for you really quickly. I have completed this temporary array. So as you can see, we have seven occurrences of five, zero occurrences of four, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. We have two occurrences of three, five occurrences of two, three occurrences of one, and just one occurrence of zero. You can verify it in the original array. Now, as the next step, what we are gonna do is, we are gonna form a cumulative sum. A cumulative sum is nothing but we just add up all the elements in this array itself. So you copy down one and then you add one with three. So you get four. Then you add four with five. So you get nine. Then you get. So the total cumulative sum is 18 and we had 18 elements in our original array, right? So far, so good. Now. How do you populate this final array? Well, there is a technique behind it. What do you do is you start off with the last element in the original array. So we would start off by number two. Now check the value of the index two in our temporary array. You can forget about this array now completely because we have modified this, right? So check the value at index number two. The value is nine right but since it's a zero based indexing what we are going to do is we are going to place a two at position number eight in a final array and we are going to reduce this value by one next we have the value two again so you see this time the value of two is eight and given a zero based indexing i would populate the value two at value number seven and once again, reduce this value by one. Then I see a two again. Once again, I would reduce this value by one and populate the value at the final array. So far, so good. Now, going ahead, I get the element number five. If you see the index at five, you see a value 18. Going forward with a zero based indexing, what we're going to do is we are going to add five at position number 17 and then we will reduce this value by one. So what we are basically doing is we are utilizing this count array or this temporary array to find the correct position of each of the element in the original array. Let me show you one more time. Next you see the element number one. So you check the index at one. So it says the value four given a zero based indexing. I would put one over here and then reduce this value by one. So 
what is basically happening is you are just decrementing the count of this cumulative sum and filling out your final output array once this final output array is filled up it will look something like so as you can see we have finally obtained our result and this is the resultant sorted array did you notice that we started from the back of our original array when we had to put elements in a resultant array that is because counting sort is a stable sort it means that it preserves the ordering of elements that means the element 2 that appeared at the last would still appear at the last in the final sorted array so this would come over here this comes over here and this comes over here and this is the property of a stable sort algorithm now let us try to do a dry run of the code and see how it works. So on the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement counting sort. And on the right, I have an array that we will try to sort. So what we do is we pass in the original array as a parameter to our function. Next, we try to determine the maximum and the minimum values of this array. So the maximum value in this array is 5 and the minimum value is 1 and hence now we are able to calculate the range so the range comes out to be 1 to 5 right in our next step we create our auxiliary array so that would be next we create our output array that would have our ultimately sorted array and this is the one with that we created going forward we store the count of each of the element in this auxiliary array so the count of each element turns out to be so as you can see we have two occurrences of one four occurrences of two one occurrence of three zero occurrences of four and three occurrences of five in the next step we form our cumulative sums. So this array would turn into. Now as our final step, we would try to fill in this output array, right? So we traverse from the back to have a stable sort, right? So we see the element number five and we check its position in a cumulative array. Its position is 10. So what we do is we reduce this value by one and then place five in our output array next we have our value 2 what we do is we reduce this value by 1 and place this element in our output array going ahead we have the value 5 again this time again we reduce this value by 1 and place this element in our output array as you can see from the code in this line we are actually placing the element in our output array and in this next line we are reducing the count of this cumulative array so once this for loop ends we are ultimately building our final output array and once this array is built it would look something like and hence this is your answer notice that the time complexity of counting sort is order of n that is because we do one scan to find the minimum and maximum element one scan to find out all the cumulative sums and one scan to fill the resultant output array. The space complexity turns out to be order of k, where k is the range of the elements. In this case, our range was 5 and hence the space complexity was order of 5. You can also say that it is a constant space. I hope I was able to give you a good understanding about the counting sort algorithm and its implementation. Note that although the counting sort algorithm works in an order of n time complexity, it takes up the space of order of k, where k is the maximum range of elements that you would expect. So in a way, you can say that where it saves you time, it takes up your memory. But sometimes you are not concerned about the space your algorithm is taking. 
you are much more interested in the speed at which your algorithm performs. For example, if you take the case of sorting characters, then you have a space complexity of order of 26, which is very much equivalent to a constant time space, right? As per my departing thoughts, I want to leave with an idea in your mind. Note that you can never have a certain rule that can determine which algorithm is best for which scenario. It would always be a case by case basis. You would have to understand the problem, think about its test cases and how the problem is going to expand. And only then you would be able to come up with a better sorting technique. Think about more cases where you can apply the counting sort algorithm. Are there ways you can even speed up the process? Or perhaps can you reduce the memory that you are taking up with counting sort? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. However, if you are still facing doubts, I want to let you know that a text-based explanation to all the content of this channel is available on the website studyalgorithms.com. I am including a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Once again, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming concepts for you. You would be surprised to know that we have even more ways to sort, but more on that later. Until then, see ya.